You're doing well, guys. You've made it six hours in. Uh, now we're up to session number seven. Hacking your Archicad with GDL and Grasshopper uh, with Eugenio and, and Jorge from Enzyme. Now, the work that these guys have been doing uh, out of Hong Kong uh, in their practice, I, I, I find amazing. Uh, they will find a million different ways in which they can try and streamline their processes to, to try and essentially punch above their weight in delivering projects. So last year they presented on their use of Grasshopper uh, and its connectivity with Archicad in producing early schematic design schemes for major towers in, in, in record times. Over the last 12 months with COVID, I talked to the, the, guy, the boys about what they've been doing that would, would be really great interest to, to industry. And they talked about how they've been supercharging their templates and, and working with ways in which they can use GDL and Grasshopper to, to even streamline their processes even more. So this session, from my perspective, will be really interesting for, for, for small practices looking to try and punch a little bit more the, above their weight or for larger practices that are probably using older processes that might benefit from making some adjustments and embracing some newer technologies. So now I'll hand you over to Eugenio and Jorge from Enzyme. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much Nathan for uh, the kind introduction and thank you very much for allowing us to be here. Uh, today, we're super excited. Yes, we're really, really excited uh, to be part of this Hack Intensive once more. And uh, today we're going to present uh, Hacking Your Bing Workflow. And we're going to talk about uh, Archicad Rhino Grasshopper workflows uh, for design and fabrication. So let us introduce ourselves. Uh, we are uh, Jorge Benetez here with me and I'm Eugenio Fontan. We are the co-founders of Enzyme APD. And um, as a presentation of ourselves, we just as a reminder that we are designers, we are architects, but we are also digital consultants and we are BIM and technology advocates. So we started uh, already six years ago. Actually, our company made its birthday very recently. So six years ago, we, starting, we started Enzyme with the idea and the dream of uh, doing very good design, but also integrating uh, our workflows with the best technology to have a, a very reliable and efficient workflow. And uh, we have this idea that every project is a research and it's a journey. And we, we think that as designers and technology advocates, we need to take the responsibility of learning and enhance uh, our work with the technology available uh, in, uh, for architects and professionals. Well, our main office is in Hong Kong. This is where we're based. Um, but we have, even if we are a small team, we have uh, some of our members of our team uh, based in different countries. We have uh, people in Singapore, in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, and also back in our hometown in Madrid, in Spain. So the clients we work with are uh, a mix of uh, developers. Some of them are very, very large and very important developers in different countries. But we also, as clients, we have some other consultants that are also architects or contractors uh, with uh, which we collaborate. We also collaborate a lot with uh, universities because we are always, you know, we're always learning, but we also want to share our knowledge with the community and with the users, um, as I was saying, in different countries where we, where we work. Um, well, some time ago, we had the privilege to present with Mr. Giorgio Tolentino in the KCC of, um, uh, organized by Graphisoft. Uh, we like to put this image because we we always look up to what we consider the real uh, worldwide experts in technology worldwide. Of course, IDEA is one of them. And we, as I was saying, we look up to these experts because we, we have a lot to learn, we have a lot to improve, and we always want to be better and better every day. So, talking about projects, um, I believe that we both are uh, tired of this idea that BIM as we know, it is, should be used or is only relevant for very big projects where there's a lot of consultants and with every complex. We think that BIM is, is, is a methodology, is a way to design, it's a way to work and we apply it in every single project that we work, no matter the scale, bigger or small. So whether we're working at a master plan level, we use, again, BIM technology, we start with it from the beginning 
Um, and we also do it when we work in architecture, when you know projects are smaller, but the definition is much uh, much more detailed. But also we use BIM for interior design. So we have sometimes interior projects. It's not that because the project is not big, we cannot leverage on technology to be more efficient and to design better. Again, our brand all this year has been that BIM is a methodology that should be used from the design stage. It's not only for complex developments, complex projects and generate documentation is a way of work that makes architecture better. And um, as I was saying as well, we collaborate uh, with companies as is the case of Takenaka in Japan because we like to implement our workflows. We would like to, through this collaboration, be more successful and develop our projects better. And combining these technologies, we, we always leverage on the power of Archicad as being the backbone of our workflow. And in this way, we can we can really uh, find an easy workflow where we combine different tools, whether it's offering tools like uh, you know Grasshopper and Rhino, but there are also many other solutions that we use, as Twin Motion, uh, Unreal Engine. We use Solibri. We we all we use all sorts of tools that give us different capabilities. And again, thanks to Archicad, we combine all this technology, uh, and also to collaborate with other consultants. They use other other solutions that we don't use, but it's the case of AutoCAD, uh, AutoCAD, Autodesk, SketchUp. We can. The idea is that being able to collaborate uh, with as many solutions as possible to enhance this collaboration in between professionals. So, starting uh, talking about design and communication, as I was saying, we just as an introduction of what we do in a daily basis. We use BIM from the design, something I, I said many times. But um, the idea is that BIM allows us to do the same work that you know other consultants do with other tools. That they think that you know BIM is not is not for this stage, but it is actually very useful to design with this technology because we can you know explore our design in more detail and even generate everything that is necessary to you know uh, fulfill the deliverables of a competition, for example, uh, or to communicate the concept stage to the client. Again, we can use uh, the, the graphic capacity of Archicad in this case to fulfill this, this, um, these deliveries. And also, um, BIM allows us to design better. What I mean is that you know, we can really track uh, the data that, that comes from the design that we do. For example, the brief for projects uh, uh, you know, is very important to, to adjust to the requirements of the client. In this case, uh, uh, track very closely the GFA of the different options that we have. For this design, you see BIM is a great, uh, great advantage. And uh, talking about automation, the advantage of having Archicad as a hub you know, with the right template, we can we can combine all the powerful workflow of, of uh, you know, Grasshopper and Rhino. We can design very complex projects, but then when we bring those, that design in, into Archicad, the data, the schedules, the documentation is automated. And when we do it different iterations of different designs, all this data uh, and documentation is generated automatically and is updated automatically, saving really, really a lot of time. And not only the documentation, but also the, the graphic uh, capabilities of Archicad. For example, graphic overrides allow us to display the different uh, the, the data coming from different design options in a very useful way. This data can be import uh, sorry can be input into the design uh, already from the Grasshopper you know on, on, on the platform of Rhino Grasshopper. And then the way this this data it's it's affecting the different design options is really easily represented in Archicad. So this is also a very useful uh, capacity of this of this workflow. And then again, when it comes to communication, um, whether it's, as you can see in this image, diagrams to explain the different functionalities of different buildings on a large master plan, or just construction uh, action metric from architecture projects, or even going to down to the scale of interior design, or even to the product design level, these graphic capabilities of Archicad are really, really useful for communication, uh, communicating our design. Um, we also think that you know using this this uh, graphic capacity, you know, m sometimes communication with drawings uh, is not the best way to communicate with clients. We can easily communicate the space using all sorts of actional metric of perspective views, and for that again, Archicad just give us this this uh, uh, graphic um, outputs, you know, for free, so we can leverage on this as well. 
and again to explain the space you know to explain how the space of in, in this case interior design uh, is working we can really uh, generate powerful images that communicate very well um, another great uh, uh, workflow or this combination of, of, of tools is the, the, com the connection, for example, of uh, Archicad and Twinmotion, and also the connection now with Twinmotion and, and Unreal. This creates really a, a, a powerful uh, loop in which we can generate really, really uh, compelling images and animations to communicate our design. Now, talking about computational design, and as we were saying before, using Archicad as a platform, Let's start with saying that the real value of these uh, workflows is the flexibility in design. So if we focus on the design uh, process as, um, as, uh, with a parametric uh, thinking, okay, we can really use parameters to automate the different uh, design options that, that, that we communicate. So we don't do any more design one by one, we don't just propose one uh, idea to the client. We have certain parameters with which we can experience and we can we can combine to design different options at the same time. So how can we apply really this flexibility that this uh, parametric way of work uh, uh, allow us to, to implement? First is automation when it comes to generate of, of data and documentation, but we also can work with uh, sustainability analysis. We can have really uh, a lot of freedom on uh, formal exploration. And of course, we can go into the fields of optimization and digital manufacturing. So our workflow is um, parametric, but it's parametric in a double way. So um, in the next video I'm going to show, uh, you will see that you know, the parametric capacity of rhinoceros and grasshopper to generate very complex design, for example, um, allows them to, once we have this information into Archicad, Archicad is parametric in the way that can extract and, and implement a lot of data into these elements and join this uh, you know more uh, constructive part of the process so i'm going to show you that probably most of you have seen already but i think explains very well this workflow so in grasshopper we can generate very complex design which is only lines basically lines this is what describes or or uh, the geometry of our project and then once we use in the connection we bring this uh, design into archicad then is when all these lines become uh, construction elements and even with the same design same you know family of lines we can really um, build different options of projects within uh, within archicad so let me go to the next one then we were talking also about sustainability so again it's not nothing new that uh, grasshopper for example has the lady back set of tools to do uh, energy analysis of our project understanding how for example the the, the project is is uh, behaving in terms of the sunlight which are the areas of our project that are uh, more impact by the sun and will be more affected by potential greenhouse effect but also getting the data of how uh, for example the sun is affecting uh, 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 our design or our geometry we can really use this information to generate design options for example in this in this exercise we design different facade options based on the shading on the surface of our project so we also use this this capacity not only for the analysis but also for uh, enhancing our design well, when it comes to design iterations, as I was saying, we can optimize uh, using the, the tools like, for example, Wallace, some tools that, again, belong to, to Grasshopper, but these tools allow us to optimize certain parameters of our design, allowing us to uh, get the best option among thousands and millions of options that are running very fast uh, um, thanks to these, these tools. And then, of course, formal exploration. We have the freedom of design, very complex uh, uh, geometry, complex design. But the advantage, again, of bringing these designs into Archicad is that we can get into this construction workflow. When we, when we collaborate nowadays with different consultants, you know, OpenBIM is, is something that we must uh, comply with. We need to play with, the, with these rules of having an open approach of the way we share data. And again, it doesn't matter what we design in, in Grasshopper, Archicad allows us to classify all these elements, whether they are morphs or they are all the construction elements we can classify following the function that is needed that then later will be mapped into IFC types and all the IFC schema um, language of uh, you know of how our building is, is uh, the, the information of our building is shared with other consultants 
Um, in this case, you know, we also like to explore with the latest capabilities of, of Archicad. As you know, Archicad 24 allow us to develop, I mean, within the same architecture model, we have the structure analytical model. So again, the complexity of this designing Grasshopper, once we bring it into Archicad, you know, we can also use this capacity. That means that our, our model is also the analytical structural model that can be shared with consultants. So it's not only for, you know, very simple structures, but can also be applied to complex geometries. Now, let's have a look to a couple of case studies of how all this workflow can be applied. The first one would be this uh, competition that we did some time ago in Hainan in China. As you can see, the, the, the design was to do uh, a couple of towers, hotel and, um, and service apartment with some villas, some landscape. And as you can see, the design is quite, you know, it's not very regular, it's following this idea of the wave. It's quite complex and it's not easy to do with a manual workflow, uh, clearly. So to generate this, this, uh, this complex shape of these buildings, you know, we can use the minimum uh, unit of this, of this type of project, you know, hotels or, or, or service apartment, which is play with this unit and then combine it and multiply it and generate, you know, modify uh, the location and the geometry to then compose what is the, the, the construction of the project at the end. In this, in this uh, slide, you can see on the right side is the final rendering, but on the left side, we can see how the different parts of the project are developed in Rhino and then uh, on the top, left uh, part of the screen we see that that model is is getting into archicad and is becoming you know again construction elements walls slabs space balconies so we can develop the project further um in this other project of course we jump into a much higher scale this is a competition we did in malaysia uh, of uh, residential towers and the gfa was uh five hundred thousand square meters of gfa which is half a million square meters of gfa is quite big and um, using, using Grasshopper, of course, we can have a um, great understanding of the terrain. The idea is to analyze the terrain to find where are the most uh, you know, flat areas where we can really locate our towers. And then, of course, we use you know, the, different, the different tools to generate the geometry, to generate the towers, to understand the different heights, the different volumes. And you know, then later on, all these, you know, all these lines that, that reflect our design will be brought into, into Archicad to develop the project. So as you can see, we have a large script, of course, to generate all this geometry, but already you can see these Archicad models, how they show the project in a really detailed way. So again, from this model, we will later automate documentation and the data that is necessary to uh, fulfill the deliverables of this competition. And you know, generate uh, the render of the final image that we want to we want to present to compete and to try to win the competition, of course. That we didn't. That we didn't in that case. But the first we did, the Hainan project, we, we won it. Okay, now I leave uh, the, the word to, to George Benitez, talking about the case studies more in detail. Okay, thanks. So we're gonna I mean, I'm going to show you a few um, few case studies here and, and the application more in detail, more in like a technical um, technical way, if you like, uh, of the application of these workflows in, in some case studies. So in this first case study, uh, I'm going to show you a, a very particular object, the design of a very particular part of, of the interior design of this project. You can see here um, our Archicad model and that it's already quite complex. So for, for this project, we were doing the architecture, the, the beam coordination, as well as the interior design. And you can see that some of these interior design elements, like, the, like some ceilings especially, they were pretty complex uh, designs uh, because of the nature of, of the project. And, and I'm gonna show you uh, the, the case of this uh, particular area here that was, it's like a, um, like a lobby area or like an f and area that it's sort of like in between a lot of different spaces so um, yeah and, and I'm gonna show you how, how we uh, approach the design of this element and how uh, the, the, the project was optimized um, with both Grasshopper and Archicad so um, the design of this space um, it was based on um, 
a lot of different parameters and conditions from from the uh, the actual project. So we had to, as you see, like frame uh, certain elements in the background, uh, some like big big um, exhibits. This is an aquarium project, so those elements will be um, like water tanks with with fish, etc. So we had to use the our ceiling to cover all the services and uh, the MEP and structure, etc. As well to frame those uh, those panels uh, and those exhibits, but also we had like a certain and particular conditions of visibility from certain angles. That all these uh, conditions on the boundary uh, of the space, uh, those visibility um, uh, parameters that we had to to follow, they created. I mean this this quite complex geometry itself. So you can see that, for example, in the in the right side we have those panels that going uh, deeper and, and lower to, as I said, frame uh, this particular exhibit. On the on the left side the panels had to be pretty thin to allow the, the rooms on the on the upper floors to 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 show the um, to see the panels from there. And uh, as you can see, the, 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 the shape of this room was uh, quite complex that didn't really allow us for create like a more rationalized, um, well, we could have done it, but, but the point is that it had so many different uh, visual angles that if we were gonna use like a simple uh, baffle ceiling with like straight lines or something like this, it would have been like really uh, not not aesthetically pleasant first of all, and actually not very optimized as well because of the you know different angle conditions and, and so on. So we decided to use this Voronoi um, Voronoi pattern that as well was I think um, in terms of the concept of the space uh, was working very well for our project uh, because it sort of like resembled the uh, the ripples of of being underwater and and that was like also part of the idea. So we, I mean, we built um, um, a grass, grasshopper script to, to create this, of course. And the first approach that we did when we were uh, presenting the concept design of this uh, area was to throw, a, a, you know, a f like more like a randomized um, uh, construction of this, uh, this Voronoi uh, ceiling. Voronoi is based on a set of points, so we created like a random set of points and the problem with that is that when we started to document the um, for for the submission of the concept design, create this documentation set, we realized that um, it was first of all very complicated uh, con construction because we had a lot of different conditions. Like for example, the notes were uh, were uh, were different. Uh, we had like very um, the variety of of sizes of those panels were. Uh, completely random so we had very large segments very small segments that will cause also overlapping nodes that, that it will be just impossible to solve so so we realized this um, only after we went we moved into the more like the design development stage and we decided to redo the whole script and and redesign the the space with uh, having like this optimization workflow in mind so we use the, the tool that Eugenio explained before that is called Wallacy. This is a genetic algorithm um, tool in Grasshopper that allows us for, uh, to do multivariable optimization problems. That means that we're gonna, we're gonna decide on certain different uh, amount of um, parameters that we want to optimize for. Sometimes these parameters are in line, sometimes they are conflicting object objectives uh, I don't know, you want to have big room, sorry, big windows, but not uh, much sun coming in. So you can see this type of parameters can be conflicting sometimes. And this tool, uh, having all this uh, complexity in mind, help you to, um, to understand, uh, you know, the, the, the complexity of the design problem, if, if you like, and also choose the best option uh, or the most optimized optimized option for for those parameters so in this case what we were doing is check uh, and try to optimize and reduce the number of small small uh, segments or edges uh, that we didn't want them to be smaller than half a meter uh, as well as uh, optimize for the, the the presence of very large segments that couldn't I mean we couldn't find 
uh, standard sizes for uh, building the, the ceiling itself. So you can see here how the machine is, uh, is, is running through the algorithm and it's also giving you visual feedback on you know, how the, the optimization problem is happening and also um, is giving you feedback as a designer. Sometimes because these uh, objectives are uh, conflicting, you need to as well uh, take decisions and for example, prioritize where certain parameters over others. In this case, you can see the the final design when it was sent to Archicad. Uh, the even if it's still quite uh, random and it's very natural um, uh, drawing, uh, which was the objective, the design objective. But but it it looks already much more um, rationalized. Um, in this case, we also changed the way that the grid was created in the first place. Instead of going from random, we went from the, the forming a hexagonal pattern that was already giving us uh, a, a much better design. And you can see here that uh, the small segments, the smaller segments that we have uh, follow this condition of uh, being larger than uh, half a meter, which allows us for uh, solving these, uh, these nodes correctly. Uh, the larger segments as well uh, fall within the um, the condition that we established of 2.44 um, meters. That was like the the standard panel that we could find there. And we also use Grasshopper in this case to create like a comprehensive system for uh, and a naming convention for uh, the cells, the segments, the panels. Uh, the nodes, etc. So all this data that we created within the Grasshopper script, we needed to bring it to Archicad in order to help us automate all the uh, construction documentation process. You can see here in the, in the Rhino screen how uh, all the elements are labeled automatically, uh, all the angular dimensions are there, the, the labels for both the segments, the, the um, the, the, the cells notes. as well, the nodes. So yeah. everything is is optimized within Rhino, but we needed to find, well, and, and here you can see the, the difference between the two different designs, which, you know, even like the way that the, the, that it's represented in the, in the initial side was like more confusing, whereas uh, the new proposed design proposal uh, was optimized as well in terms of um, documentation information. So what we did is uh, obviously send all this information back to Archicad. So the end of the script, uh, you can see there in orange, all our Archicad uh, object nodes. And we decided to follow. Um, so first of all, we, we were thinking how to bring all this information back to Archicad. And so what we did is we designed a construction detail in Archicad in the form of GDL objects. So with a very simple, um, very simple approach. What we did is model this with a uh, slab. So this was one like like a metal plate that will be uh, part of the the, the the detail of that node of that those hangers. And then we built as well using uh, simple beams and and complex uh, complex uh, segmented beams as well to create like the the detail for the hangers. And you can see here how those uh, how those both objects were applied. In, uh, in order to create the details. So this is very important because um, we realized that using these GDL objects, these objects could be, first of all, applied automatically from the Grasshopper script. So they will be placed in the, you know, in the right location with the right angles, etc. But also they will be uh, containers of the all the information that was generated in, in Grasshopper in terms of IDs and, and, and so on. So these objects will receive all this information from the Grasshopper site. And as I said, it will be, they will be located in the right place. So this was very, very successful. Uh, just going back, sorry, because I think this was not uh, explained in the, right, in the right place, but what we did is we use uh, all that information and use automatic, automatic labeling in Archicad to display all that information that was inside the element. So you can see, for example, the name of the nodes, the name of the segments, they're all automatically um, displaying the, the, all these properties that were coming from, our, from uh, Grasshopper. 
So this was very, very successful. And we started realizing, um, sorry, so this is the, like the final composition of the, of the ceiling. And you can see how the, the, the detail, the level of detail of the, um, of the ceiling was already very high. And that went back uh, to Archicad, not only for documentation, but also for coordination of the different services and NEP and, and so on. So that was also very important to, to have a very detailed uh, model in this stage to, to make sure that all the services were able to, to go through the, the ceiling. So just, you know, coming back to, to why, why using GDL and not using, for example, sending morphs or sending uh, just um, like Rhino objects from, from, the, from the Rhino screen. Um, so we realized in this process that GDL, um, if you create GDL objects, you can um, you can allow all the parameters that you want from these GDL objects to be exposed within Grasshopper. So you can control all the GDL parameters from the Grasshopper uh, script itself. So that makes pretty much uh, limitless the amount of tools that you can create and use from Grasshopper. So you don't need to be um, uh, constrained to the tools that in this case, Graphics of Half uh, has created for the Grasshopper live connection. You can create your own tools and you can control those tools from Grasshopper. Um, GDL objects have this identity component that is very important. They are uh, unique elements or um, that can contain information. And, and these elements can be displayed in schedules and be counted. And that's pretty important for, for the, especially for the documentation and construction process. Um, GDL improves the, the um, performance of our Archicad files a lot. So it has this sort of like instance behavior where the, the, how Archicad uh, uses the memory and, and how it con counts the polygons is very different from like normal, uh, normal uh, Archicad tools or, or, or morphs. So it will be much lighter file. And GDL as well, it uh, enables the companies to sort of like encapsulate the knowledge and the workflows within these objects. So different people can, can use these objects without, without you know, having to um, create new workflows or, or repeat. So if you have something that, ha that uh, like a workflow or something that you use over like several times, if you create one GDL object can save you a lot of time of this repetition. Um, in terms of the documentation, you can also control very well the visual um, aspect of it. In 2D, in 3D, you can add uh, labels automatically displaying, so it can also enhance the documentation. And it, it, it can help, in this case I'll show you in a minute uh, how, but it can help to have a better management of, of your file and the attributes within the file, that it's very important. So um, I just want to show you, so continuing this research that happened after this project when we realized the, the, um, the power of using GDL. Uh, we started to develop uh, within the company internally certain GDL libraries uh, for, you know, for different aspects, but we, we used the, the case of this complex uh, paneling resolution that was relevant for, for also an ongoing project. And we engaged in this case the help of one uh, a GDL developer. Uh, from Poland, Greg. He's he's a great guy, and uh, and he really helped us to to understand this um, this powerful workflow that is using GDL together with Grasshopper. So in this case, what we did is we created uh, this panel uh, GDL object that will help us to um, solve this complex panelization process. I'm showing you here an, an uh, case study that we did, what did we did. Uh, solving a, a complex uh, surface uh, panelization, in this case it's like a cladding. And what we did in, in Grasshopper is, uh, first of all, um, create the, the panelings that are like many different paneling tools that uh, allow you to do this automatically almost. And then we check the planarity, obviously, because uh, we wanted, in this case, our objective only creates planar uh, panels. Um, so we, we check the planarity, we subdivided further the um, uh, the, the panels that were not planar and created tri triangular panels. We wanted as well to to bring this uh, uh, capacity of, of uh, allowing different colors uh, into our object. And the important thing is that, and this is something that the live connection doesn't allow you at the moment. So if you want to create 
um, for example, this uh, gradient or this number of, of different colors creating a, a gradient. In this case, at the moment, the only way you can do this in, in with the live connection or with ArchiCAD is to create, uh, I don't know, dozens or hundreds of different materials and surfaces representing these colors, and then you have to choose those colors sort of manually. So we were very obsessed to, to bring in this uh, capacity of, of adding colors in, in ARCHICAD. And we realized that, that you can create these attributes internally in the GDL object. So the GDL object can contain inside uh, these attributes that are automatically generated from Grasshopper. And the most important part is that these attributes are not uh, appearing in the actual attributes of the of the um, file which allow you to keep your attributes and your file very clean so they are sort of contained within the object right otherwise you will have created hundreds yeah of, of attributes exactly. just to reproduce this so that's was an important goal exactly so this was a very very important goal so so we created this this gradient of colors in grasshopper and then using the tools inside grasshopper we created a comprehensive uh, ID system, uh, color naming, and and well, and and creating these planar views for for showing in the schedules, and later on the process is we we can use the nodes, the specific nodes uh, for object in uh, incorporation uh, from Grasshopper. So the library part that you have created or that we created in this case uh, has a specific node that allow you to display all the different parameters that you want to use you can see here for example in this one uh, we're showing for example the different coordinates of the nodes and, and we are as well as for example the rgb uh, color number so we are inputting all those uh, parameters from Grasshopper and on the left side you can see already these panels these objects applied into our ARCHICAD, uh, ARCHICAD file right uh, in this case uh, you can see here the object uh, the object properties and, and parameters so we have selected here in the in the in the object for example the RGB string color so you can see that's a number uh, and that specific well uh, those numbers, to 220, 0, and 40, are the ones that are creating the color value inside the ARCHICAD, uh, the, the, the ARCHICAD object, right? Uh, but this color is not displaying the attributes. So in this case, uh, you're looking at a plan view. So it's like a, you know, like a flat uh, plan view, like a normal plan view in ARCHICAD. And the, the object can also maintain the color in this view if, in case you want. Uh, and you can also program the object to show and display different parameters and different visual aids. In this case, we are uh, displaying as well the coordinates uh, of the of the points, and this is important for uh, coordination and, and construction later on. And, and this can be, uh, for example, a parameter that can be shown or or hide depending on on the view. Uh, and also, for example, you can see how it looks in, in a section view, in an elevation. So you can still maintain, for example, in case you want, uh, the coloring system in, inside ARCHICAD. This is a, an ongoing project. So what I'm going to show you now in, um, in the next slides is the evolution of this first object that we created. And you can see now in the screen the three, so, uh, well, the ARCHICAD screen, the grasshopper with um, displaying the, the parameters of, of the object. You can see now the parameters have grown a lot. So we have allowed for more parameters to, to be integrated within the object. Uh, in this case, for example, we're adding a substructure, we're adding a, a thickness layers, and, and we are even creating the possibility of using like composites uh, for for these different layers so it's it's very very powerful yes sandwich panel with its own structure exactly exactly and you can see here for example in a different view how uh, how these different elements inside the panel can be controlled as well with uh, at, at, the, at the moment uh, we have a more a sophisticated um, set of parameters inside the object so we're implementing model view options in order to be able to display for example uh, a simple uh, flat panel or all the level of detail 
displaying the frame or not displaying the frame, et cetera, et cetera. So, so we are improving slowly this, this set of tools that, that you know, we have realized that are uh, extremely powerful and, and then can you know, help us to, to bring all this information that usually is generated in, in Rhino and Grasshopper for these complex projects, but we are enabling Archicad to, to you know, bring all this information in a very efficient way from uh, using the, the GDL. You can see here, for example, a 3D document, an elevation again, uh, and a plan view. All of them, you know, displaying properly the colors, displaying the, the level of detail. We can turn off if we want, for example, the the actual exterior panel and keep only the frame, for example, to create screens. So it's it's really limitless the amount of things that you can do uh, already in Archicad, only in Archicad. Once you have this panel, right? And one of the things that we were obsessed to. And, and this is some w still in work in progress, but but it was like the capacity of Archicad schedules to display these um, these elements properly, uh, displaying the symbol, displaying, for example, in this case, the the ID, the classification, and we're working on this and we're trying to improve uh, the, the especially the the two D display uh, of these elements. You can create uh, using GDL internally. You can create any. Uh, any type of representation. So we, in this case, we want to add, for example, uh, th those coordination points that, that you, s you saw in plan. Uh, we would like to add, for example, automatically, uh, automatic dimensions, uh, etc. So uh, a number of things that will help us to really speed up the process of uh, documenting these complex, the complex projects. And here you can see just like a final image of, of the, the actual object. So we're almost at the end of the um, of the presentation. Uh, I just have like a very um, very uh, I don't know uh, quick video to to show you another of these um, these um, research projects, which is the the JSON and Python API. Um, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm just gonna uh, okay. show you this. So what? Um, very quickly. So what we're gonna do is uh, we have a very um, a small project in Archicad. Uh, you have four walls and you have the IDs in this. Sorry, the labels displaying the IDs here. And then we we're moving into the the Grasshopper screen. You can see that we have here on top the API. Well, what we have called the API uh, set of nodes for for Archicad. Right, and then what we're doing with this uh, set of nodes, for example, where one node is, uh, is enabling to work and decide which uh, which Archicad instance we are using. If we have more than one Archicad open, um, in this case, we are selecting one of the Archicad instances, and then another of these nodes, for example, will help us to get uh, the properties, display the different properties that are in the Archicad file. In this case. Uh, we're just displaying the properties here. We can see these are like the built-in properties, so the, all the properties that you can see in a schedule or, or well, in, in general in the Archicad file, not the custom properties. And we need to find, or we're gonna, um, we're gonna find in this case, within these general properties, the ID, because the object is to add the IDs into existing Archicad objects. So we're finding where which number is representing the ID, and we are adding just those numbers with sliders into the um, into the node that we have created. You can see how uh, modifying that is selecting. You can see here how it says pick. We have picked the general ID, and then in this case, um, we also are displaying within the you know the the walls that were selected previously. What is the existing uh, the existing property value here? And what we're, we're gonna do is create with a number of nodes that you know I'm I'm creating. We're creating here a, like a logic to create these new IDs, like you know the number of elements, uh, adding a, a numbering system into this uh, this set of uh, this this number of elements, and we want to override this this property. So we are using this other node that it's called set property value. And we have to, in this node, we have to select the property that we are going to, um, that we are going to modify. This comes from, from this, this property here. And then we just need to select the elements that we want to change and then connect the property that it's, the property value that is going to be overridden. 
in this case we're just running the running the script and you can see here how um, if we change the the name that name is uh, it's being uh, changed within the the rhino grasshopper and we when we go into our archicad uh, file the existing walls have now a new uh, id uh, that is being applied this is very important i mean uh, maybe it's not it doesn't you know look super exciting it doesn't look impressive but you explain why it's so important yeah so we are very excited and uh, and we need to finish now but um uh, super excited because this workflow enables uh, architects to work with this API uh, without having to actually program and, and script using like simple nodes in Grasshopper. And it's also very important because the existing Archicad Live connection doesn't allow you to modify existing elements. So we can, for example, uh, add information, add the property values with this connecting with different databases. Yeah, manipulate the data existing in the model because with the connection, which is great, you need to create elements from zero again, new exactly. elements every time. Okay. These four walls might not be ex excited example, but again, we did it based on the previous project that you saw. Yeah. Where we need to add hundreds, <laughs> more than hundreds of IDs yeah. and, and, and data, and this, is, this really opens out of a lot yeah. of uh, doors. For us. So anyway, thank you so much. Thanks for uh, for inviting us, and thank we you now, we now yeah. yeah give back the 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 word to Nathan that yeah. is going to the to um, carry on with the the Q and A. So please, uh, Nathan. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot for that great presentation, guys. Um, once again, you're blowing us away with the kind of automation and the and the and the smarts that you're putting into the way in which you deliver your projects and 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 try to actually make the concepts a reality within the documentation now. Uh, for those that are new to the event and haven't seen me uh, here in the chat with the, with, with, the, with the presenters, if you want to participate in the chat, please enter your details into the chat box to gain access to it. Um, it's just a Vimeo uh, cookie thing so that, so that nobody, you know, bots can't get into the chat. Um, well done, guys. We've got a couple of interesting questions here, some that probably will be easy to answer and some that might be hard. Let's, let's see how we go. So... Zoran's asked up first, to First, is it possible to manipulate the point cloud in Archicad with the help of Grasshopper? Um, so PC registration and coordination system alignment in Archicad. So I'm assuming from his perspective, he's talking about when you bring in a point cloud, um, can you register the point clouds and, and, and set them up in Archicad? I'm guessing that might, might, might be the question. I, I mean, we, we haven't had any, any experience with that. Yeah. Um, I believe we, I, I mean, I think you can manipulate the point cloud within Grasshopper, Rhino and Grasshopper. There are tools to, to manipulate it. Yes. And I think you can probably create an object out of that and put it in your Archicad if, uh, if that's okay. But I think once your, your point cloud is inside Archicad, you cannot really access from Grasshopper. Yeah. Yeah, so so it's going to be from yeah. from Rhino Grasshopper to Archicad, not the other way around. Okay, yeah, so correct. so so Moya has just uh, put a comment back in regards. So he's placed a mesh using a point cloud. Gra Grasshopper was used to control the number of points and then linked it into Archicad. So that's yeah. you know Moya saw my presentation last year about the dangers of point clouds as well. So <laughs> I'm hoping <laughs> well, X Y X Y Z's. Um, yeah. So the mesh was heavy, and David's speaking in the next session anyway regarding point clouds. So maybe that's a better session to cover. Oh yeah, you should. Now yeah. Lock Lockland's yeah. asked a question. Great presentation, guys. Can Grasshopper be used to place modules within Archicad? No, and we want that. No. Like I, I've been <laughs> telling Graphisoft to implement that. I don't know two years ago already. So. So that would be amazing. Uh, unfortunately, no, not yet. <laughs> I've, I've, I've requested a few things for about a decade and they'll get there eventually. Yeah. It's, it's, all about the time. it's all about being in line with the roadmap, isn't it? Um, yeah. So Zoran's asking Boyer's questions. Carl's on, Carl Fitzpatrick, one of our other presenters. Um, you show how using Archicad hey, to Carl. generate quality 2D documentation of your complex designs. But do you see in, in the near future we'll be able to skip the 2D step and feed directly into the fabrication process with 3D geometry and associated data? So this is probably more yeah. of a futurist conversation rather than just the, the processes you guys use. 
Yeah, but I mean, well, it, I, it, it is yeah. true. Yeah. I think also Sorry. nowadays, um, no, I mean, uh, what I wanted to say is that we, we produce the, the 2D documentation because for us it's also a deliverable for the client and for the contractor. But I believe to go directly to fabrication, go and fabricate something yourself. Um, not always you need the 2D documentation. I think you just, for example, 3D printing, you just export that STL file and you go directly to, to 3D print. Um, and, and I think that uh, for other other methods, you, you can you can do the same. You export to a particular file format and you fabricate. You know, In our case, it's, it's deliverable and then we will see actually how we're going to, to build uh, some of those stuff. Um, yeah. So that's why we-, we I we, think Silarchicad is not so- Sorry, I think still Archicad is not prepared 100% for like digital fabrication out straight out of the model. You, you, I mean, maybe you can you can export the STL for 3D printing, but for example, files like the step dot step file that is for CNC, I think like certain type of of like machine CAD, uh, it's still not available from Archicad. I, I'm saying this because I was requested actually this week for that project that we show that ceiling, a step file for uh, to create a mock-up in a factory. And I had to send everything to Rhino, clean up the geometry a little bit and, and then export and step file. So I think Archicad still needs a little bit of work in, in the Archicad side. But yeah, I totally see that happening in the coming future. Well, I know there's a company that unfortunately here in Australia um, went bust because I had a project with a property developer thing that went under. Um, but a company called Strong Build, and they had I yeah. went into to visit their offices as part of a, a prefabrication conference that I that I was speaking at, and they had they were using Archicad internally in their business to actually set up things as well. So there is the expertise out there, but it's not inherently built into Archicad. So yes, um, there's there's a there's a few people doing it, but it's probably at the bleeding edge. Um, Francois um, yelling at you guys. Enzyme mind blowing. So uh, and 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 Damien's loving it. And Dom says it's very impressive. Da- nice stuff, <laughs> amigos. Um, inspirational to see what can be done when combining Rhino, Grasshopper, and Archicad from Min. And that's the other thing. That's why I think sometimes there's a lot of benefits in investing in other tools to add to your uh, to your workflows. And 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 it shows how much value the Rhino and Grasshopper workflows are assisting you guys uh yep david said he can yeah. answer the next question that's good um, you are you you are or you are holograms i don't get that one day <laughs> <laughs> um, okay so great presentation from carol uh bernard hey nice stuff i'm a software engineer and looking to get into archicad add-on development and gdl how do you see the demand for Please. people with these skills? <laughs> yes, there are. Um, yes, I think we need are, more yeah. of you. Yeah. <laughs> so one of yeah. the things that's yeah. really uh, important to note, and I like to have it when I have my cursor on my face. Um, one of the things that's really important to note is that a lot of people reach out to me um, that are looking for people that are skilled in Archicad, and a lot of people that are Archicad users also reach out to me when they're looking for work. So. I'm happy to act as a conduit for you, Bernard, if you want to reach out to me. Um, and then, you know, through the power of the community, the Archicad community and the mailing list, um, we can say that that's what you're looking to do and, and, and help people out. So uh, more than happy to help you out. But uh, any other questions from anyone? And we'll let you guys have a break. It's been a, been a long day. <laughs> and you've got another yeah. engagement to go do this afternoon. Anyway, that's what we'll do. Gents, thank you very much for contributing. No well, first of all, to the panel um, this morning and, and obviously a session this afternoon. We've done well to not go over this year. Um, last year, uh, for the people that didn't get to attend <laughs> our, our, our event, um, the guys were supposed to fly out from Hong Kong um, just as uh, yeah. COVID-19 hit um, and we made the decision to, um, to stop them coming out to Australia just because of the risk. Um, of potentially not getting into the country or being stuck here in Australia. So they presented from Hong Kong. And uh, it was a, a massive, impressive session, step-by-step, intricate, intricate yeah. explanation of how to how to do some amazing stuff in Grasshopper. But I think it went for uh, 
two times the session link on with, but but it's okay. We're on time today, <laughs> and the, and the thing is that's still recorded, and we've got the copy of it, so that's all that matters. And there's lots of great knowledge in there. But gentlemen, thank you very much for yeah. contributing this event and making it as a, a, a success. And and uh, we look forward to um, catching up again soon. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you. Thank Thanks you so for much. having us here. Indeed. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks, boys. It's been great. Yeah. Thank ha you. Have a great evening. Bye. You too, you too. Bye.